You know that you need to be using video to market yourself and your listings, but you see these beautiful listing videos and you think they're so elaborately produced. There's no way I can make anything that looks like that, right? Well, I hear you. I get it. And I'm here to tell you it's probably not even necessary. Want to find out how to do it? Stay tuned. It's YouTube for Agents. Welcome back. My name is Karen Carr, and on this channel, I teach real estate agents how to work less, make more, and get even more clients and closings. Why? Because I am on a mission to bring respect back to the real estate industry. I am tired of seeing posts on social media where people say, realtors are overpaid, we don't do anything, we don't earn our money, we can't be trusted, we'll say anything to get the sale, blah, 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 blah. No more. It's time for us to bring respect back to this profession. And I am on a mission to make that happen. How do we do that? It starts with you acting in a way that aligns with your values and your ethics and your morals. And not only will it start to happen, you'll actually grow your business with better quality clients. I promise. So let's talk about real estate listing videos. How many of you raise of hands and think that you need to hire a professional videographer and you need to have super elaborate equipment and you need drone and all the things in order to make a good looking video for your listings? I know that you do because you tell me every day that you do. Now, if you're taking a $3 million listing, sure, you're going to make a lot of money when this house sells. And if you want to invest that in a professional listing tour, go for it. I mean, this is kind of a luxury marketing piece for a luxury listing. So yes, your expenses are going to be a little bit more. Here is a beautiful example. I met Brad at a real estate conference last year and got to know his body of work and his videos are amazing. He highlights luxury listings in Calgary. Apparently it's not pronounced Calgary. It's pronounced Calgary in Canada. And because he is showing these amazing homes, they are very modern and architecturally interesting and drop dead gorgeous and super expensive. He puts together these amazing videos that really showcase the house beautifully. He gets very creative. He does things like this with the ballet dancer. He incorporates his family into the video, which I love. He and his wife are a team. Sometimes they put the kids in the videos and they make them not only interesting and fun to watch, but they're also getting to be on camera themselves and showing their personality. So awesome job, Brad. You know that I think the world of you and your skill level, because these are amazing. But to the rest of you out there who don't make videos like this and never have and probably never will, is that what's required? I'm going to say that 95% of the time, probably not. Let me show you a very good example of how you can record a real estate listing video with a very minimal amount of equipment and still come off with a product in the end that looks pretty darn good in my opinion. Because remember, your ideal client is out there searching on Google. They're searching on the internet, looking for the answers to their questions. And when you show up on camera at exactly the right moment in time, they see your content, they get to like you. You're in like Flynn when it comes time for them to hire somebody. Now here's a video I did for one of my listings. It wasn't an expensive house. It wasn't a low end house. It was somewhere in the middle and I wanted to make a great video for it. So I went to the property with my DJI Osmo mobile and my cell phone. I did have an extra microphone as well because this is an empty house. And so, you know, with these high ceilings and hardwood floors, the sound is just going to echo. So you need to have a little clip on lavalier mic or a boom mic that is attached to your phone, something that's going to be an external source of the audio rather than you just yelling from three feet away into your cell phone. Now, all of these cool effects were done with editing. It wasn't done with the recording. It was done with the editing. So what does this require? This means that you have to think in advance what you want these shots to look like. 
So I knew I wanted to open my video with me talking to the camera. And here's what I said. Welcome to 113 Legends Road in Pooler, Georgia. Now, why did I do that? Because if you do a listing video, but you are not present in the video, can you establish rapport with the viewer when they never see your face and they never hear your voice? Of course not. You have to be on camera. So how about we do a little opening shot like that? Then you're thinking about, okay, what are the features of the home that I want to highlight? In this particular house, it had those lovely brass light fixtures from the 90s. They had taken them all down and replaced them. So I went around the house with my phone on the little gimbal and I took two to three seconds of each light fixture so that I could do a little montage like this. Side and out. So I sat down prior to going to the house and I made a list of all of the features of the house that I wanted to make sure that I captured on camera. When I got to the house, I saw all the little pineapple features outside and thought, oh, this is great because the pineapple is the symbol of welcome. And in the South, it's pretty common to see a house that has little pineapple themed decor and thought, wouldn't it be cute if I show the pineapple, all these things in the front yard. Now, I really like when I see videos that have speed ramping. Now, I didn't even know what this meant. I called it slow, fast, slow for lack of a better term, because I didn't know what it was called. I Googled it. I found out that it's called speed ramping. And what does that mean? So it means that the video starts slow and then it speeds up and then it slows down again. Now I didn't do that with the way I was walking, right? I was holding my selfie stick. I was holding my Osmo with the phone on it. I walked into the room, I turned and I kept going and backed out of the room without stopping, trying to walk very smoothly, but knowing that whoever edits the video is going to be able to make it speed up in the middle and they're going to be able to smooth it all out if there were any, you know, bumpy up and down motions. But that is the beauty of using the Osmo Mobile. And if you have not ever seen what a gimbal for a phone is, I've done a video about it before. Click on the link when we're all done here. You can see exactly what the Osmo Mobile is, how you use it. It's very, very affordable. If you take a lot of listings or you like to do videos where you're out and about in the community and you're walking while you're talking to the camera, a gimbal is kind of a must because it keeps your video from looking like the Blair Witch project when you're all done. We want it to be smooth so that nobody's getting motion sickness as they watch our videos. With all of this built-in cabinetry, this main floor bedroom would be perfect for a home office or craft room. So then I like to come back to the camera out every now and then. I'm showing all of this footage of the house. I'm showing off the features of the house and the floor plan and all of the upgrades that they've done and the modernization that they've done. But I'm also coming back to the camera so that I can get eye to eye, face to face with the viewer. Because again, you gotta be on camera, people. Check out this jetted bathtub in the master suite. So I just continued to walk through the house. I realized that I had forgotten to get video of the walk-in closet and a couple of other areas. So I ended up using the still photos from the photography session. And I just did the Ken Burns effect on the photo itself, which is where it's a static photo. It's not a video, but you kind of zoom in and zoom out or you pan from left to right. You pan from up to down and it looks like it's video, even though it was actually a photo. It was it was good enough that I could kind of fudge and make that part of the video. So now we get to the end of the video. It is important to have a call to action, right? You need to identify that you are a real estate licensee who your brokerage is, how they can contact you. You do whatever you have to do in your state to be legally compliant. But then we also want to get them to call you, right? We don't want them to just 
go on Zillow and look at the house. We don't want them to call somebody else. If they're unrepresented, we want them to call us. So how do we do it? And this was how I chose to wrap up my video at the very end. When you are ready to see this amazing home, just click the link below for all the information you need. One more thing. Thanks for watching. So how much could you expect to spend to put something like this together? Well, you already have your phone, so that doesn't cost anything. Maybe if you don't already have a microphone, if you don't already have a gimbal of sort, some sort, let's say it's another $150 worth of equipment, which you are going to use over and over and over and over again. So this one-time expense, you can use it for years to come, totally pays for itself. Plus it's all a tax write-off. It's all a business expense because you're using this for your business. So between the phone, your gimbal, your microphone, very little. I did not have any external lighting. I did not bring big fancy lights. All I did was turn on the lights in the room, open all of the blinds. Then when we're outside, awesome, you're using natural sunlight. Was it the most amazing production that you've ever seen? No. Was it good enough? Yes. How do I know that? Look at how many views I've had on this video. This is not a video that I ran ads to. This is not a video that I promoted in multiple Facebook groups. These are organic views. And when people see this video, I think that they liked that it was very natural and it did show off the house the way that I intended it to be shown. It allowed people to get to know the floor plan, to see what the front yard looked like, the backyard, the neighborhood, all of the things. So the filming part was not that difficult, but what about the editing? I know, I know the editing is what trips you guys up. Well, watch this video right here where I talk all about how I hired a virtual assistant in the Philippines who does all of my editing for me. See you on that one next.